Hi there. Since your last video, some people had been asking me to replicate the same result with using VAX instead of a, a Bob attribute. So if you jump in this video right now, what we did in the last video, of course, you can check here in this link. Let's say we have this curve, and what we want is all the normals we point inward half of the angle between the segments, right? So how can we do this? With uh, the back, so we can pull this aside. That's what we did last time. Well, first let's drop here attribute wrangle. And what we want to do is get the position, get the segment here, the one before. Let's say we are looking to the point one. So we get the the segment before and a segment after. So we can find this angle between here. So just to make it easier to read, I'm going to open visual code here. So let's start here with a vector. This is going to be it's going to be a call as a V before. And we're going to fetch the information of the point before. So we're going to use the point function. Point function. And it's going to be the point, so that's the attribute. So capital. And the one we want is going to be the point before. So you get the point number, so it's dollar uh, pt num minus one. And this vector is going to be this point minus the actual point we are looking at right now. So be the position. And one important thing we want is this to be normalized. So we get this whole thing normalized. Yeah, there is has a factor inside. So we have your before. So now we want the the one after. We can just copy this. It's gonna be fairly similar. And let's call this after. After and of course the big difference would be instead of be looking one before, it's gonna be the looking one ahead. And we're gonna use after that what we call a dot product so we can find the cosine between these two segments, the two vectors here. And since we got the cosine, we're gonna use our arc cosine to convert this to the angle. So let's start uh, Declaring that uh, that variable for the angles is going to be a float, and it's going to be angle, and we're going to use the arc cosine since we are going to be getting the cosine with the dot product, and inside this arc cosine we can use the dot product function, and all we need is just these two segments, the two vectors we have here. So it's going to be after and V before. So now we have the angle that we're going to use there. And we can use a quaternion to make this rotation. So if you use the quaternion, it's going to request you two things the angle, so let's put our angle there and remember we get the full angle if you want the to be the half of the way we divide this by by two and after we want the axis that this will be rotating so let let me put here the axis here it just make it clear and easy to to read uh, let's declare this vector outside here so it's getting easier to to follow along anyone jumping in our code. So vect it be axis is gonna be equal and we want to rotate that on the uh, y. So if you look top view it'll be rotating on the i axis. So we set this is gonna be for easy be zero not zero m but zero one zero that's important that's gonna be important as well here. 
And once you do perform the operation, we need to convert it to matrix so we can multiply uh, with the, the, the normals we want to rotate. So this is a function, this is a call uh, for turning the conversion, so convert. And the output is going to be a matrix, a matrix 3. So matrix 3, let's call this uh, empty x. And now that we got this, we can use this to rotate or multiply with our normals. So let's do this right away. Our normals are going to be at an empty x and time. And we can choose any one. Uh, let's use our after, so it'd be the after. And let's see. I'm sure. Let's see. It looks everything looks fine. We never know. Let's go back. Drop it here. And boom! Right away, you have an arrow here. Yeah, a big arrow here. Let's. I don't need to do it twice. Boom. It's kind of working. If you probably notice, this thing is looking. Uh, two things are happening here. First one is point outside, and that's an easy one to fix. You just invert the angle, and now it's point inside. And what I also came across with that on our previous video, everything is working fine here as it go along, it's like half away. You know, 180 and I have 9 degrees here, it's 90 degrees, I have 45 degrees in gold. But when it get here, uh, you see it's not exactly the result we're expecting. And the reason is it's getting 45 degrees instead of getting the the full range here, what we got it here. So if you look, it is following a pattern. Every time is it does uh, it goes here correctly and it turns right and it's fine it turns right it's fine, but here if you're following this direction, it makes a left turn hand, and the same thing here left turn hand and here it's be fine again because it's turning right. So to solve this problem, we can create conditional, and we're going to know this direction using a cross product. So the cross product, as it makes this turn, is going to give us a vector up here with this plane. And if it's turning in a different direction, it's going to give uh, uh, the vector of the y turn uh, point down to define our rotation. So we make this complement angle. Well, let's see how it works. Go back to the code. Just remember to twist it here. And we're going to use this same vectors here, but now to get a cross product of this. Very easy because you no know, Houdini has the functions, so it's gonna be a vector, gonna be a, a cross product, and I'm gonna well let's call this cross. Uh, so gonna be a cross product, and it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna be the v after and v before. So we're all concerned now with the y component of this cross product. So let me create a first conditional. So if and what a condition is if a cross and the first component or the y component would be the one because x would be zero is greater than zero. And let's get our logic here. So what do we want? First thing, remember this angle is radians. So we have to work here with radians. But just so we have a clear, you will be 360, right? We get a total minus the angle. We're oh, getting that. So we get the complementary angle out there. But just with this math work correctly, we have to convert this 360 in a, in a radians. All right. Should I have done this before? Actually, we want this angle to be this. So we're going to reiterate the value of uh, angle. It was hard. 
and let's see how it works. Boom, your gadget is uh, fixed. Very easy phone. So that's it for this video. And I uh, hope to see you soon in the next one.